It's 10 past 10. It's time for Press Pass and this is what's coming up. Of masterminding the failure of contraband sugar report. Probing contraband sugar in the country. The acrimonious sugar report. We revisit this story on the sugar scam, getting the real substance from reporters following it. He has not done it so clearly. Nataka ni pongeze watu wa meet ya kwa kasi mzuri wanaofanya. We'll be asking what is your understanding of the story on the sugar scam? I have never witnessed that in my life. This prison of stars clobbered me with blows and kicks. Something that has really traumatized me. We feature our NTV correspondents who were arrested while covering a story on ocean encroachment. Let's meet our guests for tonight and uh, we'll start with someone who is my senior in the profession has been here as <clears throat> excuse me as an, a news editor for the Nation uh, FM of course uh, uh, this is years back that's Christmas Yankem he's right smack in the middle right here and next to uh, him uh, we have as well my colleague here who is a senior reporter and especially with political uh, issues covering the parliamentary beat that is Kennedy Moravi. He is also for purposes of this discussion the chairperson of the Political Journalist Association of Kenya. He didn't come alone. He, I think he's a bit nervous so he had his vice come in and help him talk as part of the panel. That is Rosalind Obala. She's a vice chair of the Parliamentary Journalist Association of Kenya as well as a senior reporter with the standard newspaper and has done a lot of reports uh, that is getting her a lot of heat from some of the leaders and this is about the bribery allegations we'll get to that in a moment we also invited two of the journalists from people daily who've had a lot of heat their way as well because of the bribery story the house of bribes that they did not too long ago a few weeks ago but they're not too able to join us perhaps they've been intimidated and we've also invited other media uh, partners and colleagues who were not able to join us, but the three that we have here are very qualified on this matter. They've been following it over the weeks. So let's get started with your views, uh, getting your understanding of the sugar scam. Have we lost the plot in this particular issue as we've been following this story? Let's listen in. Wana siyasa wana kijia siyasa. Serikali wana kijia siyasa. Mkenya anateteka. Vyo wabari vya tangaza kila siku. Na sukari hivi sasa nabuzungumza imefika kilo miambili. Uyu mkenya ata mskiza nani ata mata nani. I think mercury is too expensive. So contaminating sugar with mercury doesn't make sense. It means that it be something, maybe something, something not real. Onekana ni kajemu kanecheza kuna watu wanataka kushiba upande wao lakini wanaona kama kuna upande mwingine wanataka kushiba Zasa ni vita vya mabwenyenye kwa masikini Sisi masikini tunalia mabwenyenye wanaendelea kujienjoy Naomba hii masole askari tuongele mara moja na iishe I think there are home peace who are hiding the story of the sugar They don't want to come up with that true, true story about the sugar It's a lot of insincerity when it comes to the investigative arms of the government. The media has really given us more information how the MPs are disagreeing that sugar didn't have copper, didn't have mercury. Now when you go to supermarkets, people are claiming that the nickname for sugar is actually mercury. From the media now, we've gotten to know that some of these companies still import sugar, but they have no certificate to bring in the sugar from other countries. For, for, for the understanding that we have is that uh, let the media put in more effort, put in more, more, more effort on the same so that we may be able to understand exactly what is going on in the country so that we know what, what, what we are consuming, is it safe or not. But also invite also the health expert to make us understand exactly what is in the sugar. The report very clearly. Because it has not come, the media has not done it so clearly. Kama vile ilirefanya 
some other investigation. Nataka nipongeze watu wa media kwa kasi mzuri wanaofanya. Asubuhi nilifurahi sana kuona hata wameangaza eh, mchele katika baharini bari ya Mombasa iko mchele imesukishwa ambaye ni milioni moja na haifai kwa vinadamu ikuliwe. Let's get quick reactions from our panel on those views from the ground, several counties that we sampled there. Do you understand the frustration there is about this story? Is it about the mercury? Is it about the bribery claims? Something seems to be mixed up here. Uh, what's your understanding from what you've heard? Well, thank you, Mark. And uh, I want to grab this opportunity once again to say that thank you for inviting me. I think this is a very interesting topic. But I want to say that these are very interesting times that we are living in. Okay. And indeed, I hope that I'll be able to live through the generations to come so that I'm able to tell the story and tell the generation to come that I was there indeed when leaders decided that we can finally change the courses of rivers uh, just to accommodate a few. <laughs> I was there indeed when uh, fighting corruption was quite a lucrative uh, undertaking. And I was there indeed when people decided that they can finally feed human beings on mm -hmm. contaminated sugar instead of uh, food that is fit for human consumption. This is actually a country of absurdities, to say the least, Mark. Right. It is actually, in uh, simpler <coughs> terms, what um, the founding father of our neighboring country, uh, Tanzania, Mwalimu Jul Julius Nyerere, said that uh, it is a man-eat-man society. That's where we are. But going back to the teaser that you've just played, uh, which I think is quite elaborate, I think uh, we lost the plot because you asked. Who's we? The media lost the plot. That's Let me where stop we you are. There. But, but stop before, you before you stop me, <laughs> I want to say that a lot out. of excellent journalism has been exhibited all through. But we lost the plot when we decided that this is now a duale and uh, uh, whoever, whoever. Uh, a question to answer. Yes. When we start, started politicizing the entire uh, matter around sugar, right. that's when the media lost the plot. Your response to this, the frustration from some of those on the ground and what people are now saying is losing the plot. I also uh, sympathize so much with uh, the public, the views they are giving out. You can see that they actually don't understand what happened in parliament because there are those who talk about uh, the sugar having mercury being poisonous and mm -hmm. there are those who don't understand if it had. But again, I don't agree with Crispin when he says the media lost it because I think it's the media that brought it out that actually there were bribery that led to the flop of that uh, report. Okay. And even before that, there were issues that the people were being bribed, the, 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 the millers. You remember even when the speaker himself had to give a communication to warn members that you're not supposed to be very cozy <coughs> with the witnesses yeah. who come in. Yes. And some of these witnesses were the ones who had actually been mentioned. Now, if you come back to the report that was tabled in the House, then some of these witnesses who appeared before the committee either their companies were nowhere to be seen or their names were not featuring anywhere mm -hmm. which again asked the question was it manipulated to that extent so that it becomes a flop okay. and you can even see when now the mps were being bribed openly in the full glare of the media then it tells you they are thrown everything uh, you're saying in the full glare of the media that they were being bribed yes i'll get back to you with some of the evidence is, yes. what is the smoking gun right do we have it yes Kennedy, you've been following this particular story, uh, even with our colleague uh, Seto Lale, who did an investigative piece trying to follow the sugar from the point of entry. But where's the story now, or what's the priority we should be giving? Is it about the sugar having mercury, or is it about MPs being bribed to shoot down this report? Well, Mark, thank you very much, actually, for this opportunity. And first and foremost, I want to get back to what you asked first. Was what are the views about Kenyans about this whole thing? Yes. I think nothing has changed. People are going to supermarkets. They're buying sugar as they have been buying sugar. They're eating, they're, they're, they're using sugar in confectionery and everything else. Not much has changed. Although a bit cautious. Yes. Yes. They are now very cautious even with the brands that they are buying. We do not know even what uh, is happening. But with regards to bribery, as she has said, that it was being done in the glare of media, not being anything, uh, just trying to support member, members of parliament or anything. One of the things that, that will be the hardest to ever, to ever prosecute is a case on corruption. Because, number one, 
there must be a giver and there must be a taker. In this particular case, I'd really like to see what Roslino Bala has. We will really want, because that is one of the things that we will even have splashed on our news All with right. regards. And it has already. I mean, People Daily did uh, splash not too long ago, and Dina and Anthony were in a lot of trouble in terms of being summoned. Um, to a comment on that, yes. Mark, is that the good thing is, immediately Anthony and Dina reported that. Parliamentarians themselves came out. But intimidating, in an intimidating... No. It was intimidating, yes, in the sense that they were even called to the Powers and Privileges Committee. But the good thing is, it did not even pass a week before members of Parliament started saying that so-and-so is taking bribes. It is themselves who even came to, media, to the media center okay. trying to say that so-and-so has, has been involved in bribery. To some extent, the media was vindicated. All right. Yes, vindicated on the reports that were out there and they were being accused of being malicious. Uh, but uh, really quick, on that comment before I take another element here, another segment on our backstory, just to appreciate what some of our colleagues have gone through this past week, the issue of it being out there in the glare, full glare of media. What do you mean by that? We were there actually, we were there because we had just taken lunch and we were walking out. Then we got interested because everybody, there was just some direction, every member was rushing inside yes. the dining place. And for us, one of the MPs asked us, why are you going? This is the work of the media. Can you go and get to know what is actually happening? Yes. And we were there. Only that you are not able to take pictures because I'm not a camera person, so I'm not a... But you have a phone, no. it's a smartphone. Yeah, and you could I know, but you, we walked in and we were also taken aback. Because here we were, we were seeing MPs, one with a list, and others walking in and coming out with envelopes, and we were surprised. And Okay. That He's a bit confused and bewildered <laughs> by this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's that, have a go before that, maybe. Okay, really quick, yeah. really quick. Before the thing is, uh, I really want to appreciate the courage that our two colleagues have because this is a very sensitive story. Even for them to appear and speak about it, yes. I think that's courage. But I want to say that, fine, they're saying they were there, but where is the smoking gun? That is what we want to see. Mm -hmm. Because you can't say that because I didn't have a camera. You know, members of parliament being bribed for a song, it is a serious matter. Yes. That's why I'm saying this is a country. She'll get yeah, out to watch she's done. She's done. She's just, she's just, just a second. Bit. Eh? Yes. As a nation, we've been very cautious about this story and even on reporting on it. Number one, I have sources in Parliament and I have looked for that evidence so much until today I have not found it. And we would have really loved to splash it because... Number one, some of our people had been touched, and I want to I want to to implore on this particular point that if you touch a journalist, you touch all of them. Speaking of that, touching journalists, let me just stop you on that point because it happened literally to two of our colleagues in the profession on Thursday. Two Nation Media Group journalists became the news when they were assaulted by security personnel in Mombasa. Photojournalists Karim Rajan and Laban Walonga of NTV and the Daily Nation, respectively, were assaulted while covering a story on encroachment onto ocean land of a hotel under construction. Now, the hotel in question, Dolphin, has since been linked to Deputy President William Ruto by the Nation National Environmental Management Authority. Here's their story on the back story. <laughs> Miaka salasini na nane, sijawai kuwa harassed na watu vile walivoni harassed leo. Then, from there, wakasema lazima to delete material, tukakata. Ndipoza tukaletua katika police station. I was covering the teachers conference when I received messages outcry from the public that there was a bulldozer at the beach. So the next thing I decided, I said, let me go and check. So I went there and I started doing a tourism feature. But at the same time, I was also trying to see who this person is who is encroaching to the beach. I was doing an interview with somebody who complained that due to high tide, they are not aware how they will pass because that encroachment was almost coming to the beach front. Immediately after the interview, Three men came very fast from a, a hotel which is under construction and came to my colleague Laban Waloga and asked him what, what pictures was he taking. Fact, we, we could not even answer because, because we had our, our press cards hanging. They confirmed that we were journalists and uh, 
they told us that what we are doing, what we are filming, it is not legal. So we asked them what is legal in terms of our work. So they told us that you are under arrest. The management has to view the material you are, you are, you are, you are having so that if they will be found that there is material related to this structure being constructed, which is a dolphin hotel, you will have to delete. They started grabbing our cameras and as a, as a person who does his work, I defended my, my camera. Likewise, my colleague was, was, was defending his camera. But finally, we were wrestled down. I personally was wrestled down. They grabbed my, my camera, my shoes, and finally they handcuffed me. And my colleagues, seemed because of his age a little bit, they, they left us to walk to the management office. At the office, they demanded that we delete the pictures. And within minutes, about spending about an hour there, the deputy OCS from Bamburi police station came there and uh, he just asked what were we doing and he told us, okay, let's finish this case at Bamburi police and we were all bundled in a police Land Rover. In my entire life as a journalist, I have never ever been bundled in a police Land Rover. I can only get a ride in a police Land Rover when I'm in a bony forest or other places where maybe my vehicle doesn't go. I even left my vehicle at Flamingo Beach Club. I asked the police to allow me to go and pick it up and they said no. I started as a correspondent way back in 1980. Up to now I have clocked 38 years to a position of a senior cameraman in a leading media house in Kenya and East Africa. It is really hard to see somebody of my age being frog matched like a dog. I have never witnessed that in my life. This prison of SARS clobbered me with blows and kicks, something that has really traumatized me. I'm only remaining with five more years to retire and I come across such things. For 15 years I've worked as, as a photojournalist, I've never been handcuffed. So the worst part of me is to be handcuffed by one I thought would have protected me if at all he is a police officer. But a police officer who looked like a casual worker having handcuffs on a construction site and then he handcuffs me. To me, it's, it is something I can never forget. Enough respect to my senior Karim and also my colleague uh, Laban in the coast for the work they're doing and that they will keep doing. And this will not intimidate the journalist fraternity from keeping on with their mission. And I don't know if you have quick, re com quick comments or responses to what you've just seen happening around the country and it's seemingly in, on the increase. Absolutely, Mark. And I think uh, it reminds me of my former lecturer, um, Mr. Ndirangu, and may God rest his soul in eternal peace. He once told me that you can never be a real journalist until you're clobbered and locked up. But again, listening to Karim and uh, colleague Laban, I think uh, it is quite devastating what they went through because uh, it really spoke volume about uh, the perceptions around journalism, how we are viewed, and the tribulations that we have to go in order for us to to go through in order for us to bring the story mm -hmm. uh, to the living room and tell the story in this country i think we say poorly but again i think that is the tip of the iceberg mark because these incidents i think they are becoming quite rampant, rampant and i think it is time mck the media council of kenya the editors guild and uh, other relevant institutions decided to go uh, to be serious about this matter because journalists are being clobbered. They are and being it's attacked. becoming normalized and, uh, somewhat. Absolutely. Yes. And I, I think it is time that we started taking uh, the attacks seriously. Rosalind, you probably didn't get clobbered or haven't gotten clobbered. Thank actually, God. Actually, but that was what I wanted to share with uh, Crispin because when we walked into the room where the MPs were, we were just two ladies. So we were just the two of us and we were shocked and we were like, before we would even think of call, going to call our colleagues, our main interest was to catch the faces of the MPs who were there, as many as we could, mm -hmm. before we would step out. 
So by the time we went to join our other colleagues to tell them this is what is happening, at least we had captured so many. So for us, because it's a paper and you have the memory, that was what was more important to us to know how many of these MPs were in there. Right. Yeah, and so it was actually a place for eating. So you can imagine walking into where people are eating and you start taking pictures. But there are some, uh, there's some, you know, forms of intimidation that have come your way since reports you have done in the past week, and you'll share a bit more about that. And that's a form of intimidation. Mm -hmm. Well, you probably haven't been covered, but your name has betrayed you before, <laughs> uh, Kennedy Moravia. How do you, you know, respond to what's happening? In, it's on the on the rise in the country. I want to agree with Crispus on this. These cases have been on the rise for t far too long. And one, it's an indicator that what we are reporting is actually making a difference. We are on to something. We are on to something. And all this is meant to intimidate us. It all started with the president. And when the president said that Gazeti Nyakufunga Nyama, then the view of journalists, uh, of journalists and journalism actually changed. But this has not stopped most media houses from what they are doing. Right. Media is actually being emboldened at this particular time. Remember, even the opposition in this country has been blamed that it has already gone to bed with government. Right now, the only the Kenyans who are watching us right now are depending on media to give them what is happening. We've been given the watchdog role. It is a story that has even been done by most media houses right now, whereby it is being even reported that the majority leader and the minority leader there is no difference. It's like the minority leader has now become the <laughs> deputy of the majority leader. So if anything, this is our opportunity to take up that vacuum. It's now the opportunity for us to take up that space. Most and at our, I want to defend the reportage that is in every media house at this particular time. It is on the rise that we are now exposing what is happening. Most media houses have actually taken that route whereby they are even listening to Kenyans who are coming out to give stories on a daily basis. Right. I have seen my editor, uh, Moraya Karioki, being on phone and listening to a Kenyan who is in Lodwa who is calling to give about a story. And media houses are going to spend their money going all the way there. All right. What is happening right now is that they are trying to intimidate us not to tell these stories. Rosalina Obala says that she saw it with her own eyes. But then again, remember what I said in the, in the beginning. Reporting what is corruption is actually becoming hard. And reporting on corruption is not, mere, is not merely coming to the media center and saying that so-and-so took money. People have even been invited to the Powers and Privileges Committee. But probably it's an exercise uh, it's a PR exercise for these members of parliament who just want to sanitize themselves and make sure that to show Kenyans that if something is happening with regards to this matter on corruption. And that's what we want to get to in terms of what is happening, what has been done in terms of the stories that we have done. You'll tell us the uh, responses and direct threats that you are receiving mm -hmm. and we'll get some more responses as to what priority we should be giving to this story. Is it about the content of the sugar that is perhaps making its way to your house or even uh, the uh, shooting down of the report in Parliament that is said to be there's some attempt to reintroduce it with some amendments. We'll talk about that after we come back from the break. Stay with Press Pass. Welcome back to Press Pass. Let's just get some of uh, quick responses as you're following this conversation. Jaroga Jr., you say it was very unfortunate for journalists on duty to be wrestled, clobbered, and bundled in a police vehicle responding to the story on uh, Karim and Laban in Mombasa. Let's get another one. Red Town, Sami Mono, you say Bamboo Moravi. I guess this is a school uh, friend who calls you Bamboo, but Kennedy Moravi is talking a lot of sense. But then, why are we receiving controversial or contradicting reports on this sugar? Who is saying the truth and how vulnerable are we if somehow it's true we have been consuming contraband sugar? So let's answer this real quick. Is the sugar contaminated? And is that where the story is right now? Or are we meant to be following up on the bribery allegations? Let me start with you. I think we need to pursue both because we have our leaders who are the watchdog and they're supposed to oversight on the executive and the other arms so if they're the people who are compromised then we are not going to get what we deserve to get 
to the issues of contraband sugar and the question was do we have contraband sugar that was what the committee was investigating has it been answered from what you've been following it hasn't been answered but partly in the report some of the recommendation was that there were samples of le um, the sugar was less with copper and mercury but still they said they were not able to access the government chemist at the same time the multi-agency which is uh, led by the uh, head of public service denied them the opportunity so now these are the questions we need to ask why is why would why? Up? yes okay so there's for you there's something to follow in terms of the yes. levels yes. Of, of, yes. of contamination yes. in the sugar yes yes Mark, I, want, I, want, I want to agree with her that there is something that we need to follow huh? but how many media houses now want to turn on us and want to turn the guns on us how many media houses are willing to send their reporters out there to investigate and give also their own report remember these politicians have actually been blamed since the beginning of this of this probe on sugar for the mm -hmm. to the extent that when this committee is continuing with their work the speaker of the national assembly can come to the to the floor of the house and actually say wait you guys are too cozy with the people who are coming yes. you're even kissing and hugging witnesses that that was the turning point for us as media we should have actually called upon our media houses to send some of us ntv made an attempt by sending seth olale to go out right. and, and and probably do this but then again the question then begs this issue about mercury was started by one of the cabinet secretaries yes and on the same same day that he started this conversation his counterpart in cabinet comes out and says wait don't scare people the trade cs then yes the trade cs then wait don't scare people there is no mercury you see there is no coordination and and i think that is where the media was sent on a wild coast chase. okay in, in that just with what he said before I even get to investigative stories because it takes time from how it played out from the beginning when cs matiangi said hey as you know i raised the alarm there could be mercury in our sugar actually he was more on the affirmative that there is and this needs to be investigated while well, at the airport mm -hmm. from that point till today where we've had preliminary report being brought down and then being given extended time to go and prepare the report and there seemed to be some confusion to, to this day now the story has been or is this bribery claims to shoot down this report from what you see as an editor that you have been in for years where should we really put our lenses on? I think what you needed to do, first of all, is uh, to start from where you mentioned that uh, the story or the allegations were brought up by C.S. Matiangi. That's actually where the plot started. Right. And I think uh, our colleague uh, Moraidi has uh, spoken to it and he says that the first thing that uh, the media houses should have done actually is to do an independent investigation and I want to agree with him on that and I think uh, briefly before the commercial break um, we were just discussing and I asked how come the media was not able to do their own independent forensic audit why should you depend on the government to give you a report when you know that probably the government is part or not the government actually some some people within government are part of the scheme. I think, in my humble opinion, the media is actually being set up. Okay. And uh, this is a wild goose. I think the stories that the media should be pursuing around the sugar story, perhaps, is to look at the sugar story from my wider perspective. Before you wait, 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 wait. Just a minute. Just a minute. Before you break, let me just give him a chance. Let me proceed. I want Rosalind to respond because she's. When you go to the areas that are known to produce sugar people are suffering. Mm. Members of parliament from some of these regions are actually said to have taken a bribe. Yes. You know, you need actually to tell the story of how people are suffering and I think it has been told in some way, but the weight hasn't actually been given to such kind of stories. The implications, the death of the sugar industry, when you talk about <coughs> Zoya, you talk about Mumias, you talk about uh, Chemilin, you know, Mark, do you know that in 2015 the parliamentary committee on agriculture and livestock at that particular time did the same investigation mm -hmm. produced a report with clear recommendations how many people have bothered to look at that report right. how come the media is not telling us the story of that report 
I'm not faulting the media here, just to be understood. But you're but talking I want about the wider context. Yeah, a wider picture. context. Yeah. Let's stay the course and follow up the story. Rosalind, as don't, be the, don't, be distracted don't be distracted by the yeah. politics yes. of sugar. All right. I, I disagree with uh, Crispin. Okay, I agree with you with the report because actually we've been using that report even when they were investigating sugar now. That the, the 2015 one? Yes. And it hasn't been implemented. Actually, that is what the Committee of Implementation has been following up. That where has actually that report reached. But look, it, look at it here. When you talk about uh, the CS, Matiangi talked about uh, the sugar being poisonous. That was to set uh, the media to a different path. I don't agree. Mm. Because look at it. Kenya imports sugar that it processed, uh, some of the products that are processed are sent to our neighboring countries. Uganda is our number two trading partner. Tanzania is number three. So I don't think we will go and kill ourselves by saying that the sugar we are importing is actually poisonous. So we should have asked if the CS actually came out and said it, then it means that is where we should have stuck. And you remember when Adan came in, you remember the changes we saw. He was moved from trade and taken to East Africa. Here is a case where we also saw the government chemist moved from the Ministry of Health to the Ministry of Interior. Mm -hmm. So these things were happening at the same particular time. So the question should have been, why this fast tracking of everything? Then it means that actually something was not right. So the question that the committee should have addressed was, do we have poisonous sugar in the country? What is the quality, the, uh, quantity that we have? And which is fit for consumption? And which one should be destroyed? Mark, just yeah. a quick one. And then Kennedy. You know, the other, the other, but no offense meant, no improper motive on the uh, parliamentarians. But the question that I've always asked is whether the parliamentary committees have the capacity of investigating something and anything because we've seen it before. Yeah. When you look at even the qualifications of some of the members of those parliamentary committees, I think when you look at the composition of those committees, it should tell you something, whether that is an authentic report or not. Okay. okay. Yes. <coughs> I want to come in with this and, and, and probably say, number one, the reportage on this matter's sugar has been excellent. But then again, you turn the heat on the committees and parliament itself. I knew this report would not be passed in parliament three days before, actually a week before. Okay. And I was so sure. Number one, the communities with which parliamentarians represent, mm. even the cabinet secretaries from where these politicians come from, were saying that we must protect our own. And from there, you knew that this report was bound to fail. The mistake or the problem is not with parliamentarians. Look at it. Some of these reports that are done outside parliament come up with very, very solid conclusions and recommendations. Okay. But look at this one. Kanini Kega has been on media prosecuting his matter to the extent that I even carried him live on an interview where he said that the problem was the House leadership. And that's why his report fell. He says that he came up with very solid recommendations, but remember, some members of that committee came out and said that, one, uh, we do not agree with this report. This is not the same same report that we, that we did. So what <laughs> they actually did uh, is they were sending people on a very wild goose chase. This is not the first time sugar is, not, is being debated in parliament. That's right. Remember, even the Mumias report was being debated in parliament, but it never went anywhere. Where there is a hot potato, parliamentarians must come in, and that is where interests come in. And the moment interests come in, that is where also journalists are also sent to start and investigating other matters on reporting on other matters. Mm -hmm that are not supposed to help Kenyans at that particular time. At this point, are we able, he even asked, he brought it up, uh, can we independently um, get the advice of an expert to tell us whether the sugar we have is contaminated? Is that something that we can pursue uh, for the layman to understand the practicality of that? I, th I think we need to do that because, again, uh, when Crispin talked about uh, the caliber of MPs we have uh, constituting committees, I don't think the background matters a lot, especially maybe in the legal uh, department and others. But remember, they have a technical team. They have the legal team. They have the researchers. Supporting it. Yes, supporting it. But at the end of the day, what we have is a, a watered-down report. So at the end of the day, that's why we're saying the committee is uh, people influence the outcome of every report.
because if you follow the debates when the during the sittings and you look at the final document that is tabled they are like cock and and and, and, and you know what? yeah, you know what? yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. let him speak and then i'll give you a chance i i think i totally agree with rosaline and kennedy on so many fronts but where I don't agree with them is actually when, uh, when, for instance, Rosalind says that um, these parliamentary committees are supported by a technical team. Yeah. But you know, well, that's you, the need structure. To, you need to, yeah, fine, fine, yeah. it is the structure. But you need to ask yourself, whose word counts? It At is definitely. At the end of the day. Yeah. But now, having said that, Mark, Kennedy, just a minute. Having said that, Ken, uh, Mark, I think uh, whatever we are seeing in parliament, the entire saga around sugar is actually a reflection of who we are. We need at some point ask ourselves, what kind of leadership are we electing in this country? Mm. I think that is a pregnant question. We must answer that as Kenyans. Number two, when you ask Rosalind here and Kennedy, they'll tell you that they know the people who have benefited from uh, sugar money. And we still go ahead and put them even on air. We interview them. And you know, these are fellas who sh actually shout the loudest. They are right. just like uh, the fellas who go to funerals and dance yeah. around your grave yeah. just to ensure that you are dead. Yes. You know, that is a exactly what you're seeing. What would with. stop us then calling them out? If we've seen them, if we know them, what, what would stop us calling them out? Mark, you just can't call someone's name without any evidence. Because that's you, the pregnant matter. You your there. eyes cannot be evidence, Mark. Your eyes cannot be evidence. <laughs> we have seen people, and people have actually gone. You're saying through. basically in Parliament, uh, you might see something happening, but unless you have Mark, it on record, you must Mark, have it on record. They say that I want to ask TV cameras there. I want to ask. I want to ask. Just before, just before, just before you continue, he responds to that. Just a minute before he continues. How many times do you go to, for instance, a scene of an accident, and you're asked how, when you come back to the studio, you are asked by your editors. So how many bodies did you count? And you say ten, because those are bodies because that can be seen. Okay. So in this, them. but in this, in this, he has, he has, he has a good point because here. Because those are bodies that what can, can hold. Mark, if you I see think someone and you and you actually say, "I saw Moshimi," or so and so, you can't put that in a report. It is a dangerous Mark, affair. I want to, I want Mark, to, I want. I think them. CRISPR was in the newsroom a very long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you see, what we are saying, what we are dealing yeah. with here, Mark, is a fact whereby a committee has been given the mandate. And you see, once a committee sits, it's a quasi-judicial uh, body yeah. that has the mandate to call anybody. Mm. I want Mark, I, I, I want CRISPRs tomorrow to call the government chemist and let's see whether the government chemist at Ashika Well, he'll came. tell him it's a public you know, you know, see, uh, What I'm trying to say is this committee you know, is calling well. people yes. and they are coming in front of media and they are giving reports. And those reports are the basis of our stories in the evening. But when what Rosaline has said mm -hmm. is that when the final report is coming out, something different comes out. We were dealing with a case today. In Parliament, a uh, Homer Bay Senator, who is the chairperson of the Public Accounts and Investments Committee, comes and says, uh, and defends his committee, saying that they, were, they did not try to solicit 100, 100 million mm -hmm. shillings in bribes to change the course of the reports. But they come and say that so-and-so came and said that this is government property. So-and-so came and said this is government property. And that is what informed our report. You're talking about the Ruaraka land. The, that is the Ruaraka yes, land. Yes. But at this particular time, what where Christmas is saying that we are being sent on a wild goose chase or journalists should go out and do one or two things. I thought you agreed with that point. Didn't I you? agreed with it <laughs> yes. to the extent that you will get to a point whereby somebody will either agree to give you that story or they will not. Rosaline here will tell you, when that matter of sugar was being investigated... What happened to investigative journalism? That's another question. Okay. okay. But to finish yes, my yes, point, yes, to finish yes, my yes, point, yes, to finish yes, my yes, point yes, I take a quick break. The government chemist was even moved from one department and put under the interior ministry. What were they trying to hide? Right. Okay. No, I, I, disagree, I disagree with Ken when he yes. says that uh, the only evidence that hold is a, a pictorial or, or a, a, a caption, uh, a video. But remember, this is not the first time we are talking about corruption in parliament. In the last parliament, a committee was disbanded. You remember the Absolutely. PAC committee. Absolutely. And we didn't have pictures to yes. demonstrate that. It was the MPs who came but out and said... 
yeah just one but remember the members themselves said that and even in this parliament before even uh, the sugar issue came up remember Anthony and Dina's story it was talking about corruption again and MPs were talking that is the time we even knew in a committee we have a well chair, uh, welfare chairman called the big boy who decides who comes in even if you're innocent and you come before them and you don't behave the way they want okay. then the report will have to victimize you <laughs> we don't have pictures to demonstrate that but members are telling us each committee has a welfare chairman we have the inner workings yeah That's so this is investigative you yes, investigate yes, yes. you use your sources and it's not one source so no, you no, cannot no, no, say no. i will not report Rosalind, can we get the names of those you saw as after you come to the break oh my god oh. <laughs> <laughs> that me a lot that me a lot uh, we'll get back with the concluding part of this conversation really enjoy this because there's a lot that's coming out it's easy to talk when you're not in Parliament when you don't know the inner workings of Parliament when you're trying to pursue a story but we are appreciating the concerns and the first-hand accounts that are being brought here can we answer the question of if the sugar is contaminated when we come back and as well as can we name those who we've seen being bribed if indeed there were some and uh, what stops us as journalists and also after which we'll be talking to uh, Raymond Mujuni from Uganda to update us on the status there on our international Radar. Stay with Press Pass. Welcome back to Press Pass. And yes, we have the concluding part of this conversation before we look at our neighboring country, uh, Uganda, which is on fire. And uh, you will know the latest from that from our uh, colleague in the industry, that is Raymond Mujuni, in a moment. But um, we have some responses. Samuel N. Orutua says, even if we don't have tangible evidence in Parliament, but once there is mention of bribery, that alone has tainted the name of MPs beyond recovery. And that's something you can talk to. Let me just go to something else that uh, caught my attention a bit earlier. Quite some responses as we're following this conversation. Um, our okay it doesn't exist someone has taken it down uh marcos bright says it's funny how we have converted the media into dci agents christmas you should listen to this one we should know their boundaries and stop blaming the media and uh sami deno you say uh deonono i think is your name you say sad the Gideri media which put jubilee in power now having their reporters whipped all right uh, that is your opinion um just stella you ask exactly what happened to investigative journalism and uh some other william says i'm not aware of this menace if an mp can line up and pocket ten thousand shillings it is totally sad kenyans are being oppressed with high taxes on common good that common monanchi struggle to get that is why we are borrowing to pay lieutenants who have been waiting so just some of the comments that you are sending in with the hashtag press pass thank you very much for weighing in on that uh, but now we're in the last leg of this conversation just to answer i would want us to bring out of this part can we tell with the report that has been shot down because we have access to it can we tell from what it said recommendations that sugar is not contaminated or is contaminated and are we able as journalists to call out those who have been said to have received bribed bribes in parliament to shoot or defeat this uh, particular report and why are they doing so to protect people who've been indicted well, Mark, I think you've asked quite a number of questions, and I want to say that uh, journalism can never be silent. That, uh, indeed, that is actually one of its virtues yes. and faults at the same time. It must speak immediately, and immediately so. Uh, indeed, uh, when the echoes of wonder and the claims of triumph and the signs of horror are still out there in the air. Having said that, this is when journalism should start speaking. It has to speak on matters health and looking at uh, the headlines. That's an angle headline. you think we don't have. Absolutely. I think uh, a lot hasn't been done around that area. And I think people are getting me wrong. I started by saying that I've seen excellent uh, pieces of journalism around this particular matter. Mm. But my question is, how do we take the entire conversation forward? One of the ways of taking the entire conversation forward, I think, is actually looking at the structures of cabs. How come, for instance, when you look at the banner headline of the standard today, they are mm. talking of a million bags of poisoned rice being netted in Mombasa. How porous are our borders? I think that is a serious question. We must start addressing it and address it seriously. And we shouldn't have to wait for a parliamentary away. committee to sit no, we reformed don't. and, we and don't. look into this. We don't. 
I know the MD was arrested, he's been uh, arraigned in court, but I think that's just that. I think we need to pursue the matter and even try to tweak it around I'm just with our it up own just journalists. For those who don't know what uh, we're talking about here, that let this is our journalists go out there, import even contrabands. I think Rosalina Obala was talking about uh, how poor as Busia, Busia border is, yes. and I think uh, that is one of the areas that we can focus. The other critical area is actually around health, like I've mentioned. That is serious. We must know what are the implications of the sugar that is said to be laced with mercury on our public health. Okay. I think that is a serious conversation that we Rosalind, must take up. Rosalind, you have interacted with that report that has been shot down, I know, over the weeks, over the last few days. And from your perspective, is it conclusive from that report whether the sugar that is in question is contaminated or laced with mercury and other um, substances? I don't think it's conclusive, but the mere mention that there were traces of mercury, lead, and copper and asking the various agencies to conduct further investigation is something that should be pursued. So it's there in that yes, report? Yes, it is there in the report, okay. in the recommendations. Yeah. Okay. The only thing they cited that they were not able to access the government chemist and the multi-agency also blocked them. They had also said they had taken some samples to the University of Nairobi, which we did not get the, the feedback. So I think it is something worth following. And the chemist in question, how is it? how hard is it to access that? particular chemist and get the answer from them. Actually, the funny thing that the last sitting of the joint committee, the government chemist was supposed to appear, only to be told that he's been spotted somewhere around the parliament premises and he disappeared. So up to now, people don't know why he did not appear before the committee. Okay. Yeah. And someone would ask, you're the journalist, you're my watchdog. How, have you tried to get in touch with him? Have you tried to get answers from him? Or is it not that easy? I've not tried to get access to him. Okay, is that something that we can pursue? I think it's something we worth pursuing. All right. Yeah. Um, and on to the issue of following up on people on parliamentary committees and how they can be corrupted in perhaps pursuing someone's agenda. You've done some reports in the past few days that has brought you in the line of fire. You can just mention some of that to explain the difficulty in telling this story. Actually, the 12th parliament, I think, has been more hostile as compared to the last parliament. We started with the question, is this parliament doing its role? Because months down the line, the debates in the house, the sitting in committees, what was coming out was just wanting. Yes. And I think we put the speaker to task about it and he confided to us and actually admitted that this parliament had started off on a low note in terms of uh, debates in the house, even attendance. Up to last month, there were so many MPs who had not even made their maiden speech. And you but did that report? And we did what that report. What happened to the standard media group from I, that? I got demand letters from some MPs. Some accused me of being used by other MPs to fight them from their regions. Others even came and turned it around to be a women issue and they were attacking us because I'm a woman and I did the story. So actually, it wasn't so easy on us but we stood with the story the other day we also did the bribery story again they were on me actually on tuesday last week <coughs> i was not able to go to parliament because of that blocked but, access yeah many people were saying we're waiting for you so <laughs> wednesday i tried i went i was okay there were uh, others who were very happy like the woman rep for nyeri who actually s spoke out and accused his colleagues of taking bribes and she was so happy about it uh, uh, Simbarati and some mm. of the MPs who are so happy with the report because they're saying our people have actually seen that the few MPs who are not part and parcel of this uh, uh, thing which was happening in parliament mm. then we had the story on um, on Russia and you remember it's, it was something that was so heated because people wanted to know why did we send our MPs we didn't have a team there and they were all in, in Russia and just before that, I remember the Speaker of the National Assembly cancelling a retreat for members Bunge Sports Club that was supposed to have a retreat in Kisumu. And he asked that if somebody can sit down and just form a, a club like that and expect the Speaker to go for a whole, week, uh, a whole weekend to just talk to them without going through the committee. And this club actually took nine members to Russia mm. on top of the eight members from the sports um, committee. On taxpayers' money. On taxpayers' money. And when you read the report, what caught my eye was that when you opened the first 
page it was telling us about FIFA when it was started, yes. the teams that have played, the teams that qualified to go to the World Cup, until which teams went to the quarters, the finals, can, the and, 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 and I was like, these are all things Kenya know. Why will a whole committee go sit down and do this? Yes. Only for us to come and see that all the pages were plagiarized. It had been lifted from somewhere. It had been lifted. <laughs> Only the chairman's <laughs> comment. And then now we came again today with the story on the senator, the, the 100 million bribe. Again, that one has generated heat because it came as a surprise. People were talking about the National Assembly not knowing that the Senate was also on the same line. Okay. Yeah, so these are some of the stories that when you do, actually when you sometimes you see your phone and you're shaking, now what are they going to tell? You? Right. Yeah. So what should we prioritize right now, uh, Ken, as you know, our lead political reporter here at NTV and a leader of Political uh, Journalist Association of Kenya? What should be the priority, especially to close this case, or at least pursue it to the end? The one on sugar. One, <coughs> a serious media house, like some have already started, should now get that report, look at it with a tooth comb, and actually send some of their reporters out to look at what did the MPs do mm -hmm. and what did they find. Who was indicted? Who was indicted, what was their role, and all that. CRISPR says that uh, we should revive investigative journalism. Mm -hmm. That path has actually been taken by very few journalists these days. Right. Most of the people who are coming from schools, most of them, even some ladies, want to go the humanitarian way. Men and some ladies want to go the political way. And these are some of the safe grounds for journalists. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go into the hard stuff that is investigative journalism. Right. Some of them who have exited the stage and gone to do something else mm -hmm. are still revered to date. Some of them who are still doing investigative journalis journalism mm -hmm. are the same same ones who are doing it while some of us were in school. So you see, that is the route that less and less journalists want to follow. Okay. It is even said even the path to heaven has very few people who are going through. <laughs> So it is something that we should revive. Yes. I want to say something about this contraband and what KEBS is doing and what NEMA is doing. There is a report that was done by Citizen Television mm -hmm. and done by one Patrick Igunza, whereby they went all the way into Uganda and they saw how this uh, Juala, what is Juala? Poly Polythene bags mm -hmm. are yeah. being brought into the country. That was one serious piece that we saw. Mm -hmm. and. They actually called out NEMA and called out KEBS and went all the way and spoke to the Director General of NEMA. That's some of the stories that we now need to say. And that is what we need to do with regards to this sugar debate right. and the sugar report. Now go back and trace the steps and see now that politicians have been unable to tell us the truth, <coughs> now that a report has been shot down, now that people who have been indicted have been saved, although I want to agree with some of them that in a report whereby you say that yes, Adam Mohammed should go home because of a mistake that has been done by Kenya Bureau of Standards, you're playing with the minds of Kenyans. Okay. But all in all, I want to say now, moving forward, journalists will now take that with the help of the media houses with which they work for. Yes. Let investigative desks be set aside. We have seen it has successfully worked with the Daily Nation. I do not know about the standard, but I have seen <laughs> the Daily Nation has gone ahead. We have people like Akina JK, John Kamau, who has an investigative piece every Sunday on the newspaper. So this is what we need to do. Let media houses set aside some money for investigative journalists. Okay. And let these journalists who have shown interest in this particular area be given a chance for them to work for it. Not today, you've been put on sports, tomorrow you'll be put on politics. Which the other is what day happens. You'll be put, yes, which is what happens right now. The other day you'll be put on business, and probably on a bad day you'll be put on international news. <laughs> which you have actually last <laughs> week. <laughs> I remember you uh, lamenting. But let me ask another question that to the layman seems simple. 
Um, if we have CCTV cameras within Bunge, we should be able to track whatever has been happening this yes. week of you know the issue of bribery. What's so hard in accessing? Will you access it in the first place? Did who Mas will Baraza, give you the chance to get it? Did yeah. Mas Baraza, uh -huh. the member of parliament who started these wild allegations on, on corruption, went and tried to get footage because they said that that person who, I don't want to mention their names because I do not have evidence, Yes, that person who was actually bribing members of parliament was doing it in the house. Remember, no media house is allowed with their camera inside the inside parliament you depend and on the they feet. have robotic cameras that mm. are not manned by anybody like the ones ntv has here yes and yet when he went to ask for that footage he was told uh, it is no longer there oh so it's probably been erased uh, <laughs> to some extent that's something that everyone has been asking on so is this a dead end to pursue um, in your view as, as an editor mm -hmm. although he says you're probably an editor you were in a newsroom a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> but from your standpoint is it hard to tell that story on those who are said to have bribed I want to say this and having listening, listened to Bishop Kennedy Murray <laughs> first of all I think I want to commend <laughs> Speaker Justin Muturi okay. because this is a, a speaker who's decided that he's going to call it as it is mm. you've seen uh, the way he's indicted members of parliament uh, especially on uh, corruption allegations. So I think it is commendable. Yes. I think uh, you speak to Muturi quite often, don't yes. you? Mm -hmm. If you speak to him well, maybe he can consider giving you that footage. I'm not saying that he's, he's actually the custodian of it, but what I'm trying to say is that we need to invest more in investigative journalism. Yes. Because I'm very sure, I think Moha is in Parliament. Why don't you make use of him? Maybe our former it can be an <laughs> 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 I don't know what became of him anyway. Guy, but I want to say yes, this, Mark, yes. that going forward, I think it is a good thing that the, the media industry has decided to focus on stories that matter. Mm -hmm. Because uh, a media platform or a media house like uh, NMG, for instance, yes. through uh, Daily Nation, it's the first... Uh, uh, Daily Nation was the first uh, media house or platform for that matter to break the stories on corruption and, and I think they have done extremely well that's when we started seeing all these allegations around Waraka and whatever whatever coming up so I think that is a path that mm -hmm. we can pursue as journalists yes uh, the other critical thing is now to call out on MOA I think it is important for them to invest media owners association media owners association not to let down their journalists. I think it is very important they invest. Let us guard our journalists because we are operating in very dangerous times. Mm -hmm. You've seen even our two colleagues, they are not very free to speak on some of these issues and I think that is worrying. Yes. So MCK, MOA, Editors Guild and all other institutions that matter must now start uh, investing heavily in protecting journalists. Okay. DCI, ESCC, that's another area that I don't want to go. But DCI has done extremely well on these issues. Okay, you, you had a chance to you know blow our own uh, trumpet about uh, you know Nation Media Group. I'll give her an opportunity. Yeah, the standard. <laughs> the standard. You've done a good report here yeah. on something that we'll be following up in the days to come. A million bags of uh, poisoned uh, rice. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yes. I want to say. Yeah. Yes. Also, journalists should not be should not be very. Uh, what we call it, very selfish about reporting about themselves. Yeah. Other media houses, it was funny that when a reporter from Nation with experience like Karim, other media houses decided that that was not a story for them. Our, our own colleague who was, uh, yes. you know, clogged. other media houses decided that it was not a story for them. You see, when parliamentarians, once you touch one of them, they will all gun up and defend one of their own. That is why even Crispus, I'll tell you, it will be very hard for any concrete matter to come out of Parliament with regards to these corruption allegations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they will come and introduce something different for journalists to follow and will forget about the bribery claims. That's why they are saying that call them to the Powers and Privileges Committee and let it investigate. The Powers and Privileges Committee has never been open. Okay. Even when they were even when they were interrogating our own Dina and Anthony, mm -hmm. remember. So these are some of the things that will just be 
sanitized. As you respond, I have to. I have to. I have to. People sent me this, and can I, you're there in the, in the group discussion. If you can get a screenshot of what I'm looking at. This is a picture of one of the tags that we had. <laughs> you know, and there's a lot of question as to this. I want to give you an opportunity as you, you know, wind up. I'm really trying to also call, uh, you know, Raymond Mujuni, but it, I'm having difficulty reaching him. But we'll have a quick look at what's happening in Uganda. Kanini fingers duale. You saw this? Absolutely, yes, I, I did. What was your response as, a, as an editor? I think it is still, grammatically it is okay, journalistically it is okay, but you know because we are corrupted <laughs> in terms of the way we were brought up, right. we think other things that I don't want to go into. Yes. But I think it is, uh, grammatically it is okay. It's an okay tag. Yes. Would you use the same okay. tag? Yeah, I will use it. Every yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Ken? I was in the newsroom when I saw that story. <laughs> And one of the things that came into my mind is, wow, that's my name there. <laughs> but just as Christmas says, it's very gram grammatically correct. Yes. But just Kenyans need to get their minds out of the gutter. Okay, because there's an argument out there that we need to be sociable, socially sensible, uh, is what they said. But it is grammatically correct, and it in, indeed, you know, points out, says that he points out, uh, you know, Duale in this whole. This is a story you did uh, yes, on I that did particular day, and Kanini was on record as saying that he's going to actually take some action against uh, Duale and uh, Mbadi. Uh, on the actions that they took in fighting this particular report. Uh, you remark the fact that people talked about it. Yes. I think it was captivating. Yeah. And you know one of the things <laughs> in journalism is that you must ensure that your tagline, whether it is a headline, yes. whether it is uh, those taglines that we do or scrolls, are punchy. Punchy. In I yes, think it was punchy. And also just as we end. As you yes. tell us where this story is headed next into the week, because yes. it's being reintroduced somewhat. Now, Mark, uh, one of the things why... I'm saying even journalism is on the rise at this particular time, like the association in which Obala and I come from. That the is political the Political Journalist, Journalist Association. Association of Kenya, yes. One of the things that we insist is the accuracy of a story. Sometimes, every evening probably, we have a WhatsApp group whereby we even discuss how stories have been done. <laughs> and that is how we are raising the bar on journalism. Yes. And for political journalists, remember, it is the only category in this country where you will never receive an award for for actually reporting on. So we must better ourselves. But coming, job. yes, it's a thankless <laughs> job. And political <laughs> journalists have to come yes. and actually check on themselves. But right. where are we moving with this story? I think this is a personal opinion. Right. It will be, it will be fruitless for these members of parliament to try and reintroduce this report as it is mm -hmm. in parliament. Because what makes the majority leader or the minority leader to change on their stance when they have said that those people who are supposed to have been fingered were not fingered? Wow. Okay. Can we leave it at that point from you? and then? <laughs> I, I, I think we also need to, to change the way we do parliamentary stories and political stories. Of late, I've seen very notorious um, MPs mm. always seeking to see cameras, always demanding to be live. And every time they call for live coverage, either they want to send a CS packing or send somebody packing, and it ends at that press Set conference. Set an agenda. Yeah. And they're always the same, same people. And we'll always be there full with the cameras, and we don't see where these press conferences go. And some of the MPs have accused them that they are rent seekers. So they catch the eye of the person they are looking for. If it's the CS, we are going mm -hmm. to sack you. Then the CS will call them, <coughs> and then that story dies like that. Right. So I think, again, for us who cover parliament, we need to go beyond. Let us not be used to set agenda for other people. Because here is a case you're talking about corruption. Yes. We are the people giving these people the opportunity. You go to a committee, and the chairman sees the cameras, and he says, mm -hmm. now the media are here. I want to address the nation. <laughs> so he's using the media to set agenda for that committee. Tomorrow you go to that committee, they're in camera. So it seems the, uh, the witness who has come is now behaving but well. But it's funny sometimes yes. there's, the, there's, there's several cameras, but until one particular media yeah. has also, that, yeah. it's a topic you can actually <laughs> Yeah, about. yeah, yeah. These so, live gadgets that have come yeah. and politicians, they're using them to, to settle scores. Remember, I'm in that committee to report what is happening. But that politician who has seen this live gadget has seen an opportunity... To they make sure that they have either been heard yeah. or to intimidate the witness <laughs> who is before them. Right. 
All right. Um, I've really tried to call uh, uh, Mujuni, Raymond Mujuni, who's been giving really good updates through his Twitter account on what's happening in Uganda. But we have a quick uh, update on this particular story uh, on the international scene. Uh, we shine the spotlight on the ongoing crackdown of opposition politicians in Uganda by President Yoerim Seveni. Tear gas and live bullets rocked the streets of Kampala on Tuesday, on today actually, on Monday, beg your pardon, as police and the army battled to contain rioters protesting over MP Bobby Wine's lockup. The MP has been charged with illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. The protesters chanting Wine's slogan, People Power, Our Power, on Monday afternoon lit bonfires in the middle of roads demanding the release of the MP. President Museveni had earlier dismissed reports that the Chandondo, uh, Chadondo East MP had head injuries or bone fractures as had been claimed. And with some of the clips that we have shown and had from our colleagues in NTV Uganda, it does show that indeed uh, people were injured. And uh, from one of the updates that Mujuni has put out, the military subjected uh, Bobby Wine to a medical examination at Kampala Imaging Center. And he said he would share, he shared it with me and said that what they recommended was independent checkups on Bobby Wine, who said not to be able to stand uh, without help or even sit just telling you what he's undergone, the sad state of affairs. And actually, a Reuters journalist was earlier arrested, and although, although he was released, his equipment has been confiscated by the authorities there. A story we will keep our eyes on, and even though the authorities say it is fake news that uh, no one was injured, it is something that we can see with the footage that is available. And speaking of fake news, on the radar tonight, we focus on a letter that has been doing rounds on the internet this week. The letter is said to have been authored by Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko, ordering for the demolition of the Western Hotel, while the said letter generated interest and debate on social media and even on the streets of Nairobi. Sonko has since denied authoring it, terming it fake and a malicious attempt to tarnish his name. He says that the demolitions only target grab public land and buildings constructed on riparian land. And with that, uh, we would want to end the conversation here tonight. But it's something that we can continue with. People have been following uh, what you've been saying and really appreciate your uh, perspectives. You say that political journalists are not quite awarded, but it, it's a thankless job. But yeah. I can tell you the truth. If a good report, whether it's from the Daily Nation, from the Standard, from the Star, from NTV, KTN, uh, Citizen, KBC, name it. If it's a good report, Kenyans will uh, spot it and appreciate the work. So keep doing a good job, guys, while you're out there. There. And uh, thank you, Crispus, for keeping an eye on what we're doing and always, you. you know, prodding where you feel that we are going wrong as a communications uh, practitioner. But hopefully you'll be joining us back in the newsroom. You never know. There's a lot of <laughs> movement that is being made. Thank you, uh, thank Rosaline you. Obala, for <laughs> your candid uh, views that you have even uh, disagreed with your chair. Uh, in the Political Journalist Association of, of Kenya, uh, you know, group. And that just shows how honest you guys are as you do your job. And we look forward to more reports from the Standard and even from the Standard Media Group as general. And as, our, of course, our reporter from the NTV, uh, senior reporter, political and parliamentary affairs. We look forward to more reports from your end and stand for the truth. Thank you for watching Press Pass. Unfortunately, we were not able to talk to Raymond Mujuni, but follow his account. He's really having the latest reports and updates on what's going on in Uganda. And with that, I will end and say hashtag free Bobby Wine. Good night.